I'm down here in Southern California with Toyota. Not to look at a specific vehicle, but to look at a vehicle technology. In this case, the hydrogen fuel cell that powers the 2024 Toyota Mirai. Mm -hmm. But it's not just that Mirai that it powers. As you might be able to tell behind me, there are some other applications that you will currently find this technology. And I had a chance to visit their technical center to get a closer look at some of the things they are working on, how it all comes together, and some other applications that you may see here in the near future. While I'm no longer at that technical center at the moment, I am at a brand new facility Toyota just opened up here at the port of Long Beach, which is going to be producing hydrogen, but I'll cover that in just a few moments. For now, let's take a closer look at vehicles like the Toyota Mirai, peel back some of the layers and see what it is that hydrogen is currently doing and where it might be heading in the not too distant future. Now this is essentially what you find under the hood of the Mirai. This is the fuel stack. It's what takes your hydrogen, converts it over to electricity, and then pushes that electricity out to the rear motor to make the vehicle go. And not just the Mirai, but any other hydrogen vehicle using a very similar process and something just like this stack or this stack stacked because we can add one more or two more or three more to increase the electricity output you just need to then have a motor powerful enough to push whatever it is you're trying to move, or at least something that can take advantage of all the electricity that these stacks are able to process. But if you wanna know more about the stack, we have another example here that's opened up just a little bit so we can see a little bit further inside. If you crack it open, this is what you'll find under the lid. Here in the top section, which we'll just call the lid for the moment, is going to be a lot of electronic components, but what they're covering is going to be the actual fuel cells themselves. Each of these stacks in here is containing 330 fuel cells. We'll go ahead and take a closer look at that fuel cell because they're incredibly small, but they're the magic here. They're what makes everything go. It's not every day you get one of these up in the air, but it's also not every day that they pull off everything underneath for you. So this is what powers the Mirai, is your hydrogen. And the hydrogen has to go somewhere. And we have the opportunity to see the tanks underneath the vehicle. One there, just in the storage area, one here just about under the passenger seat and this one running here under what would generally be the transmission tunnel but because this doesn't have a transmission and actually the only power is coming from the rear motor it's going to be replaced by another tank and these tanks are totaling almost six kilograms of total hydrogen and that's going to be more or less about six gallons of gasoline as far as energy density Right here at the rear axle, you can see the drive unit. This is going to be your right side and left side. And obviously our orange cables are going to be the power coming from the front to the rear because the fuel stack, the actual processing of the hydrogen happens at the front of the vehicle. And the power here for this rear wheel drive Mirai is here at the back. If you want to get a different view of what those tanks look like that we found on the Mirai, we have one, two and three here. The other one there is just an example that we can go ahead and see. Essentially what this is, is a carbon fiber wrapped tub of plastic inside to make sure that we don't get any leaks within the container and to make sure that the container is nice and robust. The tanks are one of the easier components to scale and unlike batteries, they don't take infinitely more materials as they increase. Certainly it's going to be more difficult to put together but that's one of the benefits here of hydrogen is the ability to scale it and scale it without using nearly as many resources. One more thing about these tanks, besides the obvious visual similarities between this and the tanks one finds in certain Disney movies, is that they're very much safety tested and durability tested. Right now, these are certified for 20 years of use and to withstand quite a bit of a beating because obviously what we don't want is the hydrogen inside to be making its way outside. Now this is obviously the big rig, but instead of peering under the hood, we're gonna go ahead and jump over here to the left, where we have the entire vehicle stripped away of everything but the powertrain. Now up front, we have the exact same fuel stacks as we find in the Toyota Mirai, but instead of one, we have two, and they are quite literally just stacked on top of each other. And this is all about creating electricity that then goes to the motor that powers the vehicle. So the creation of this electricity doesn't require much more. It doesn't need a ton of output all at once. So those two Mirai stacks are enough. Just like we saw on the underbody of the Mirai, if you want to know where the power is going, follow the yellow cables. 
and those yellow cables are sliding all the way under the truck here to the rear because of course this is rear wheel drive. The motor you find back here, however, is going to be quite different than that of the Mirai because this is a very different application. And for this one, we're looking at a 310 kilowatt output on this rear motor. Now we're gonna go one step further and strip away even from the frame because we didn't have the motor mounted in that particular frame. What we do have here is the dyno. This double stack is the exact same as we found on the frame, but this one has all of the componentry because this is connected to the dyno, doing all of the testing and validating of all the power outputs. So the next step in that process is going to be coming here through the battery pack. And this is a 200 kilowatt hour battery pack, which is definitely on the large side, but really only about the size of something you'll find like the Silverado EV. And it's a lot smaller than we find in the battery only electric trucks that we're seeing on large scale from other manufacturers. Following those yellow cables, we end up back here. And this is the drive motor. And this is the 310 kilowatt drive motor that as you can see is connected to that dyno, getting all of the power output, all the readings and all the testing that this vehicle is going to use for its final validation. It's not every day you get to look at all the components stretched out here all at once. And it's a great opportunity to see how they all come together. And obviously it's a fairly complex system, but it's also easy enough to see that this is no more complex than an engine is, gasoline or diesel. The components might look different. We might have a few inverters over here on the left, but really we're looking at the next generation of powertrains. And if they're gonna be powered by something that isn't just pure battery, then hydrogen is a great option, especially in a larger vehicle where we can have the capacity in hydrogen tanks that we don't need to make up in hundreds of kilowatt hours of battery pack. Back out here to the frame, because if we're talking about capacities, this is one of the things that makes this a viable product. Not just now, but moving forward, is that it can drive a long enough distance to be practical in a real world application. And these tanks, we have six 10 kilogram tanks and according to Toyota, this should do anywhere between about 350 and 450 miles when these are all full. Now that's going to be over 10 times the capacity that we find in something like the Toyota Mirai, but also it's going to be a lot faster to charge up than we have in say any other fully battery electric semi because the goal here and some of the technology development that Toyota is doing is not just here in the product, but obviously the infrastructure for the product. And right now, the hope is, the goal is, and they're working towards getting 60 kilograms being able to fuel up in just about 10 minutes. Now, just to put it in perspective, each of these tanks is about six feet tall or long, I guess, depending on how you look at it. So getting these filled up is no small feat. When you throw all the body panels back on and slap a clever paint job or a decal on it, this looks just like any other semi-truck. And this one is supposed to. It's currently Kenworth branded, and this is just as capable, or nearly just as capable, as just about anything else you'll find on the road. If you've got an 82,000 pound load, this will go ahead and take it for you. And while it might not do a full 450 miles with that entire load, it's still going to get far enough for where you need it to get to. And in the event that you don't make it where you need to go without needing to refuel, the good news here, and again, one of the benefits of hydrogen is that it is a lot faster to refuel this, assuming you can find a station, than it is going to be with a battery electric truck, which will also need a station. So if you can take the fuel stack out of Mirai, stack it one on top of the other and provide a lot more power for a much larger application, the question is, what else can you do with these fuel stacks? And Toyota's glad you asked because they're also working on stationary fueling, power generation. And this here is a prototype unit of a roughly 80 kilowatt output generator that's running on, you guessed it, a Mirai fuel stack. This one being a single fuel stack. And one of the only downsides that I can see to this design is at the moment, it does not come with any of the hydrogen on board. It would need to be externally fueled, but if this is a permanent application, it's not a problem and it would be totally normal to have a separate fueling station. If this is something that's going to be mobile, well, whoever dropped it off would also then have to drop off the hydrogen. Either way, this thing is active and running and it's actually charging the BZ4X we can see right off to the side here. And you can hear just about as much as I can, which is that there's not a whole lot of noise. So even if there are at the moment, some challenges to this over something like a diesel generator, 
One of the benefits is that this is nearly silent. Now here's a product that you will certainly recognize, but it's actually probably two products that you would now recognize. This is obviously a Toyota Tundra, but it's the new variant of the Toyota Tundra, at least the prototype variant, which is the TRD H2 or the TRD Hydrogen. Unfortunately, it's not a hydrogen Tundra. It is a hydrogen generator Tundra because the second product that you would recognize is here in the bed. Now, obviously this custom cap is what I would call hydrogen blue, but it's actually housing the same kind of generator unit that we just saw, except now in a much more mobile application. The one thing missing from this unit is the same thing that we found with that other generator, which is that it needs hydrogen, which you would have to bring along separately. And because this is pretty much at its payload, you wouldn't just be able to strap a trailer full of hydrogen and bring it along with you. But this is easy enough to drive out to an event, park, plug into, and then power everything you need, and that hydrogen can come and go as it pleases or as is needed. Now, I'd be remiss if I didn't touch just a little bit more on the facility that I'm at here today, which is a very important part of the hydrogen technology lifecycle because you need hydrogen to use hydrogen, and this back here creates hydrogen. I will keep it nice and simple. We're here at the Port of Long Beach, right next to Toyota's facility. And so three things come out of this facility, one thing coming in, all of which are being utilized. We have natural gas coming in, coming out we have electricity, and that electricity is either fully powering the electrical grid, or it's using some of that electricity that it creates to then create hydrogen, which is then shipped right across the parking lot to the Shell station here that is used to power some of those trucks that we just took a look at a few moments ago. If it is producing hydrogen, then it's also producing water. And what we get is a pipeline going straight to the Toyota facility across the street, used to clean the vehicles that are coming in to the port. That way we are wasting as little as possible. And obviously this is not a perfectly efficient system, but it's a great partnership not just for Toyota, but everyone else involved because we really are making sure that we are taking care of the resources as best we can in circumstances like these. Whether or not you think hydrogen is the fuel of the future or it's just a flash in the pan, it's very much a technology that I think the world benefits from further research on and Toyota is doing a lot of it. And the way they can scale this technology and all of the resources they've already used being applied to as many different applications as possible is always great because that way they're able to do just more with what they already have. Now, one of the big things missing in this hydrogen future is infrastructure. And Toyota is really right now teetering on that infrastructure because not only are they working on how to make fueling a little bit easier, they're now sort of creating the fuel themselves. And while this is a pretty small application, it's a step in the right direction because what we haven't seen is a hydrogen fueling system that is owned and operated by an OEM. And the only OEM in my lifetime that I'm aware of that has done any fueling is Tesla. And Tesla seems to have just pulled the reins back on that one. So either way, if this is going to succeed, we need more hydrogen. This facility is creating it, and as much as it creates, Toyota seems to have some pretty good solutions on what to do with it. If you have any thoughts, questions, comments, or concerns on anything I covered here today, let me know down in the comment section below. And if you could switch over from gasoline to hydrogen, in the blink of an eye, assuming there was a fueling station, is that something you'd be willing to do or are there still some reservations that you might have? Find us on Facebook, Threads, Instagram, all those other social places. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.